various types of neurons and their responses to compounds. So we're really looking at um, the first part of the webinar is talking about a reagent. The second part of the webinar will be talking about how you actually implement that reagent in uh, toxicity testing. All right. So moving on, uh, probably everybody here understands the power of uh, IPSC technology. That is where you take the human sample, send it through a series of laboratory uh, manipulations to make stem cells, and then you can differentiate those stem cells into a variety of terminally differentiated cells for use in basic research, drug dessert toxicity testing, you know, drug discovery, and cell therapy. And the real advantage here then is being able to translate that data back to the human condition, because again, that is your starting material. Um, at CDI, we're a, a leader in the stem cell technology. We are split into two different divisions, a life science tools division, which we'll be talking about today, as well as a cellular therapeutics research division. Our core competencies are the reprogramming of the IPSCs and genetic engineering of those lines. From the scalable manufacturing and differentiation to various cell types, as well as the phenotypic assays.
cause in turn cellular activity. So for example, you can look at the, and interrogate the ion channel activity. So we're under baseline conditions. We see the firing and synchrony. In this case, you interrupt that with 4AP or a potassium channel blocker, and you see that level of firing drastically decrease as you thought, you would have thought. Similarly, you can do the um, pharmacological in, um, intervention of sodium channels, calcium channels, with whatever you um, care to look at. Secondly, then, is looking at that cell-to-cell -cell communication, where again, we've got that baseline activity on a different scale than, than above. You can see the periods of synchronicity, and then that can be inter interrupted or modulated in a variety of ways by chemical addition. Here's the example is PTZ, where we see a really slowing down of that synaptic echo, that synchronous activity. All right, so you're really, again, able to, to, to do a holistic interrogation, look at both intracellular and cell-to-cell -cell communication. Now, one thing for an assay, it's one thing to show the biology, but that assay has to be robust and repeatable. And here we see an example where, um, a very typical example where every well that was plated in that 48 well plate shows high levels of activity. So when you plate the cells out, you know you're gonna get a full plate of data, not just a well or two or three here and there, okay? Um, now the real uh, uh, purpose of this, sorry, is to really then interrogate drugs. And there's a large variety of endpoints that one can pull out. What I'm showing here are really um, single endpoints. Oh, sorry, let me back up. What we see on the top is really in a dose-dependent fashion, we can see qualitative changes in the way the cells are firing and communicating with each other. Now, we can pull out a lot of those endpoints, such as um, spike burst intensity, so amplitude. We can look at interspike interval or frequency. We can look at degrees of synchronicity, the level of network synchrony. Many, many individual types of endpoints, some of which are shown down here on the lower right-hand side, really spread out along the x-axis as a series of individual endpoints and along the y-axis in concentration. So we can see, for example, network velocity tends to increase with the addition of PTX. Similarly, we can look at um, types of graphs that, that compare two different endpoints to see um, which variables, which endpoints are correlating or tracking with the other endpoints. So again, there's a wide variety of, of ways you can analyze this and endpoints one can pull out, um, but then it's really up to the investigator to determine which endpoints are, are um, pertinent and, and specific to, to their needs. What we'll see with Dr. Bader's presentation is really how you can look at those endpoints as a gestalt or as the whole and really do fingerprinting and classify your unknowns into distinct chemical classes and compound classes. So really taking this first level analysis to a higher order. Okay. Um, so I'd just like to pull the camera back a little bit uh, and look at the big picture. And, and well, actually not quite yet, we'll have this slide first, a summary slide. Um, we've shown you a couple of examples of chemicals. And what we see here is that these aren't just isolated incidents. Um, at CDI, we've looked across um, a fairly wide variety of cells, I'm um, sorry, of compounds, whether they're control compounds, excitatory compounds, compounds used in the clinic, as well as other chemically active compounds as well. And again, we'll see how this type of a data set can be expanded into a much larger universe of Dr. Bader's presentation. So in summary, you see the gluten neurons uh, are an excitatory neural population. They're a seizuregenic model We've tested across uh, chemical, um, many chemical classes that are currently under evaluation within the HESI translational biomarkers of neurotoxicity. So really what I've shown you is just a couple of assays that can be um, utilized with the cells. Um, there's obviously a wide variety of, of additional types of assays that you want to look at and in the realm of tox toxicity where we CDI are able to really provide a variety of endpoints, measurement techniques across multiple
multiple cell pipes and mul multiple support venues, right? Then pulling it out even further, take advantage of that IPS um, uh, technology and the power of that, we're able to look at these types of techniques look at, and, and endpoints across neurodegenerative diseases, a variety of disorders, and a variety of other types of neuropathies. All right, so with that, I would like to say thank you and at this point, I'll turn it over to Dr. Benjamin Bader of uh, NeuroProof. Perfect. Thank you, Blake, or Dr. Anson, for this uh, very nice introduction on the IPS models, which we at NeuroProof use for, you know, in part, neurotoxicity detection. As NeuroProof, we come from uh, more than 20 years of background with the rodent mouse cultures, and now since about five years collaborating with CDI, we have merged into the IPS field as well. So I will concentrate on the microelectrode array technology, which, which Dr. Hansen was introducing already, uh, but from a point of view that we use the mouse model as a reference to characterize novel human IPS models. Since the IPS screening is also 